Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I am going to be breaking down two brand new palettes from Natasha Denona. You guys know I have uh, spoken very highly of Natasha Denona palettes. This goes way, 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 way back to when she first launched these mega palettes that were like $225, I believe, which is just like ridiculous on one hand, but I really believe that they were meant to be makeup artist palettes and the way the shadows were formulated and the way they blend and perform and the colors, they're good, like they're great shadows. And I have since talked about many of her palettes. I kind of feel like a broken record saying this, but I did use Natasha Denona shadows on my wedding day. I trust them that much. Now, I've also had a few hiccups with Natasha Denona. I don't really care for many of the face products, foundations, concealers. I had an issue uh, here in this studio with one of the shadows kind of popping out of the palette itself, and that was an issue with shipping and being that it was a pressed pigment and so soft, and they addressed that issue. It was a whole thing. And then the last palette that I tried, I just did not like altogether. So for me, this has been a little bit hit and miss. And with this price tag and not liking and loving the past couple of launches, I've just kind of taken a step back and been like, mm, it's another Natasha Denona palette. You know what I'm saying? I haven't gotten like super, super excited, but oh, these two palettes, you guys, I was not gonna buy. First off, I wanna say that. I was not gonna buy, I was not gonna review, and then I was in Sephora and I was swatching and I was like, dang it, I don't have a lot of these colors and they are so soft and they have the kind of blend that I personally love. Love, so I did pick them up. Now, here's what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a look at both palettes individually. I'm gonna walk you through different eye looks that I did over the course of the past couple of weeks. I have been playing with this so much and wearing this so much because I wanted to really go deep and not just do a first impression on these two palettes. Let's just like take a cannonball leap into this first palette right here, which is the gold palette. This is stunning. You have some metallics, mattes, duochromes, toppers. You really get a nice mix of everything. I do really, really love this. So the price tag on this one is $125. I know, right? I like, stop. That's just, is that right? Uh, it's even more than what I thought. Wow. It's not $125, it's $129. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm recommending this, but I'm going to, let's just get into it. So I'm just gonna kind of talk and swatch for a moment. And then I will uh, guide you through yesterday's look, which I did with finger paints. And what I mean by finger painting is kind of using my old go-to technique. And that is using the tools that God gave me and not much else. I feel like I can feel bone structure better. I feel like I have better pressure control. And of course you do need brushes to fan out and fluff out color, but there is something to be said about just learning how to work with your fingertips and the warmth of your fingertips working and meshing and working with product. That's an added benefit. You have some slight oils on your hands regardless of how often you wash them. That's another benefit if you know what you're doing. Anyway, let me walk you through yesterday's gorgeous to die for easy, quick look using the gold palette. So the first thing that I did was I took the shade Aurora right here, which is so gorgeous. I mean, this shade is just so stunning. It inspired me to pick this nail polish out. That's why I'm wearing this nail color. So I pressed this on the inner corners of my eye and I did the technique where you take it on one hand here on the fingertip, one hand here on the fingertip. So you are not going hands on here, press, press, and then moving your arm weird by any means. You're actually taking it on both hands. So you're really getting like an even press in with that color. Then I went right into the star of the show, Oro, which is just, look at that. I mean, oh my God. Ah. It's like Willy Wonka's golden ticket. Like this is just like the perfect gold that is also mustardy and has a lot of richness to it. And when you mix these two together, you get this stunning kind of peacock, golden teal type of a thing, which I really love. And something that I like to do, and I'm gonna try and illustrate on the back of my hands to better teach you guys, I'm gonna take two fingers, one with the teal, one with the gold. So let's pretend this is my eye. So I'm pressing, 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 pressing. And then I go to the center of the eye and I press, press, press. Then I go back with the hand that has the teal on it. And that's how I kind of get 
this to mesh up. And then when you're done with your makeup, you can always either take a brush, go back in with your fingertip and intensify either side. And it really just gives you this beautiful, beautiful look. I love it. I think it's stunning, eye-catching. You can work with loud and soft colors simultaneously, and it just is quick. So then from there, I went into the shade Teak, and I also took my fingertip, and I just went on that outer edge of the eye, and I pressed it in and did a little pat, pat, pat. I did take a brush and I kind of fanned a little bit of that color in through the crease. I smoked out the lower lash line. I went in with some colorful liners, popped on some lashes, boom, out the door, done. I did one more thing once I was kind of adjusting and looking at the full look, I wanted to see what Spark would look like as a top coat. And I also put Spark underneath my brow bone. So this is Spark on its own right here, but then Spark pressed in on top of everything is basically just like a glittery top coat for your nails. It doesn't have a lot of a base pigment. It's just glimmer, glimmer, glimmer. And it's going to, as you turn and live your three-dimensional real life and people are looking at you from all different angles, it is going to grab that light and just kind of look like little sparklies everywhere. It's very, very pretty. So that was my look. I did over the weekend use Python, smoked pretty heavily under the lower lash line. I wish I had captured that, I didn't. Taking that color off is a pain. That is the one color in here that I'm like, Ugh, it's so tough to remove. Let's just go through every shade in here so you have a better idea of the texture difference of what's in here, mattes and metallics and glittery things. We have Lime Chrome, which is so unique. I love this. I feel like they had this as one of their top coats in the cream pots, which those dry out so quickly. I think you would be better off investing in a Natasha Denona palette than in those cream jars because they, they're here and then they're gone. We have Python, Sparks, Aria, Kava, which you definitely want to press into the eye or use a little Mac Fix Plus, use a glitter glue. This one is the flakiest one out of the entire bunch, but it is stunning. Then we have Aurora, which is one of my favorites. Dijon, gotta love that name, Oro. You have Log, Varus. Then we have Brass, another one that is a bit chunky, not as chunky as Kava, and this is just such an unusual, beautiful, gorgeous shade. The far left row in this palette is really what grabs my eye. I think these colors are so stunning and they make the whole thing feel very, very special. Then we have Sandstone, Alchemist, Teak, and REM. Now looking in here, you might think, wow, a lot of the mattes look exactly the same. And they do because they are very, very similar, but they work together and they build and blend and buff together so beautifully. I love this palette more than I thought I would. I think I will be reaching for it a ton. I think it is so perfect for this time of year for fall looks, but I do think carried into holiday, it's gonna be such a gorgeous palette to have all those glittery golds and you know fun greens. I just think this is such a beautiful palette. Moving in to the Safari palette, which do I just tell you guys right now if I had to pick one or the other, what I'm gonna pick? What do you think? What do you think? I'm gonna pick the gold palette. I just, I am a girl that likes a lot of shine. I can't help myself. It's what I'm attracted to. But I do think there's something to be said about mattes that blend the way that these do blend. They have a firmness, but they have heavy pigmentation and they work together and layer together without creating a bunch of balding and patchiness. So this is investment makeup. Don't think that you need these palettes to have great makeup. I wanna make that clear. But if you're someone that just wants to invest in one thing and you want it to perform so well, then I think you can't really go wrong with this. I mean, this is every matte shade you really could need with the exception of maybe some cooler toned chocolatey browns and maybe a more pale cream um, white shade. But beyond that, like this will get you very, very far. So I wanna go through the look that I am wearing today so that you guys have an idea of what I did. I did use my fingers again a little bit. I can't help myself, I'm back in that mode. So the first thing that I did was I took my time with the shade Desert Date, which is just so bright and so orange and you can see that it's fluffed pretty high up to my brow and it really is the backdrop for this whole look. And I think I will have a hard time going into any other shade first 
when opening this palette because it is such a beautiful and easy to blend shade. So I did blend that out and buff that out and I did kind of pack it a little bit heavier on the outer corner, kind of knowing where I wanted to land with doing a very smoky matte look today, which is super, super challenging by the way. Usually a smoky eye, I like to have a little bit of a satin finish or a shimmer or lighter shades that I'm working with. But to be able to pull off a look like this completely matte is pretty cool, you know, it's pretty good. After Desert Date, I went into the shade Tribe. Now Tribe has more depth and is much more orange. It's not like this bright, corally kind of orange. It's just like straight orange and it is intense. So this one right here, you really, really could either pack all over the lid and you could do kind of like a halo eye with something brighter in the center. For me, I just wanted to intensify the crease and make it look a little bit more heavy in the lower crease. And then that other color was gonna kind of fluff out and create that kind of gradient effect that I really like. And then I decided to just go kind of crazy and I took the shade Savannah, which is this beautiful army green and I packed this all over the lid. So when I pack things on the lid, I do not pull. What I do is I take the color where I want it and I pack it in. I press, 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 and I build it up to how I like it. Your eyelids have texture to them and as we age, it only gets worse. So I really like kind of tilting back, smoothing my lid out as much as I can through raising my eyebrows and then just really kind of pressing and almost pushing down. Not hard, you don't wanna be like tugging at your eye, but I'm like pressing, 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 and I'm only getting it to the area that I want. And then what I did is I took a brush and I took the shade thorn and I just kind of accentuated that outer edge a little bit pulled a little bit of color through to make sure that there was no choppiness between this you know green shade and the orange and that was pretty much it I smoked out the lower lash line a bunch like I just kind of stayed there for a while and really 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 decided to go for it and smoke out that lower lash I put a bright orange in my waterline which you guys right now this is the best metallic orange that I've ever found I swatched everything in my drawers recently as far as like metallic colors this is called striking color Copper. Look at this. Is that not so stunning? And then I did take from Anastasia the metallic luster liner in liquid gold. And that's what you see kind of bright right through here. Cause I just felt like I needed some, some, something shiny, even though I was like, I'm not gonna use any shiny shadows today. We're just gonna do full matte. I needed a little, a little kiss of it. So I just did that right here. I took the shade Malia and I put that underneath the high point of my brow. And that is the look, you know, a little black wing liner, a little lash, done. So, you know, you can have a lot of fun with these palettes. They are pricey. They do wear beautifully. You know, Natasha Denona products, whether you use a primer, whether you don't, whether you use brushes, whether you don't. For the most part, with exception of the Tropic palette, which for some reason I just could not get into. These two, if you like fall colors, if you like mattes, if you like a lot of wow factor with your metallics, then either one of these are gonna be great for you. I really enjoy them. Let's go through the color swatches for the Safari palette. So we have Malia, we have Fata Moringa, Rhino, Stone, Savannah, Aya, Thorn, Desert Date, Shea, Tribe, Lotus, Amhara, Maasai, Voodoo, and Tamarind. I think I'm gonna be stuck on these for a minute. I really, really, really love these. I did also try this little guy, which is more affordable. They have these, um, obviously it's like miniatures, miniaturized version. These are really cute. I think they're like 25 or 29 and it allows you to kind of sample the Natasha Denona um, formula, if you will. So, these are cute. Did I just, why do I always do that? I swatch with like a finger that has nothing on it. These are really, really great. They have kind of a berry toned version of this. Um, this is a mini star palette, which is one that I have raved about. That actually is the one that I used on my wedding day. So they pull, you know, a, a vibe and feeling from these larger, more expensive palettes and make these itty bitty ones. And I think that's so good. And then you can kind of see if the formula makes sense to you, if it wows you, if it's different enough for you to 
put this on a birthday wish list or a gift wish list or a spoil yourself wish list, you know? I did purchase these myself. This is not sponsored. I just wanted to sit down and having worn these two palettes for a few weeks, talk to you guys about everything, how I'm feeling about it, how they wore, if they're worth it, and not just do the typical first impression. So I'm trying to push myself when it comes to something like shadow where you can do more than one look to take my time with it and really get to know things before I give the like stamp of approval. So yeah, I hear your feedback, even though personally, I still kind of feel like I know what I like right away. I will say that, but I am happy that I was able to on camera film a couple of looks for you guys. I have a third one that I will insert right now that's just kind of in fast forward that mixes both of the palettes together. So, you know, this is like fall dreams, fall goals as far as color. I love it so, so much. What do you guys think? Do you think spending this much money on shadow is ridiculous? Do you think if you price it apart and you look at how many pans you get in a palette like this, is it, justified. I don't know. As a makeup lover and someone super obsessed with all things to do with makeup, the thing that most excites me about these is the difference in color and how unique the setup is. And then also how everything sticks and adheres to the lid and is very reflective. And then for the mattes to buff out and blend the way they do, it is something very, very special. So Natasha, you did it again we're all going broke. All right, um, there you have it, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. I am here Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. PST, and I hope you come back and hang out with me again. I'm sure I will be using these palettes a bunch. Let me know which one was your favorite, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.